right, hey guys, why don't we go get, star get started because this is the first of a series of lightning talks that are 10 minutes each. So I want to be respectful for the people that are coming after me. So in terms of orders of operation, we'll, I'll talk for 10 minutes, hand it off to the next person. And if you have questions, I'll be in the room to, uh, till the hour is up and we'll go from there. All right, so this is talk number one, jump starting your DevSecOps pipeline with IAST and RASP. Gartner's gonna be so happy with me because those are terms that they coined and you know, we as a human race like putting things in a box, so we're, I'm, we're gonna put things in a box. Uh, but because we have 10 minutes, I'm gonna bottom line up front. You're gonna learn three things today. One, if I'm successful and we have enough time. One, what is I asked? Two, what is RASP? Three, where can you find it for free and start using it today? Right? I asked helps you find vulnerabilities in your app as you're building your app without doing a scan or without bringing in a bunch of pen testers. RASP helps you defend your app against those vulnerabilities and when, once you push your app into production, again, without buying a firewall or without hiring a bunch of pen testers or a bug bounty program. Right? All with the same agent. Right? And three, where can you find it? I work for Contrast Security. We have a free enterprise full feature IaaS and RASP solution that's available to you today. So you want to start building an app, you want to make it secure, you want an enterprise grade product, it's available for free. There you go. That's my entire talk if you don't learn anything else from this, from this presentation today. All right? Um, how many of you guys have heard of Contrast Security? I work kind of small, but all right. So uh, if you've heard of Contrast, you've heard of this guy. That's Jeff Williams. He's one of the founding members of OWASP, the Open Application Web Application Security Project, um, one of the first few people to care about so uh, security of the software layer. He's not here today because he, that's from yesterday. He's in Singapore growing our Asia business, which is growing like crazy. And he's also six foot eight. Uh, so I will do my best to do my best impression of a 50-year-old security legend that is six foot eight and plays in a league with retired NBA vets. Right? Um, but the reason why I show Jeff is, Jeff wrote the OWASP top 10. If, has anyone heard of the OWASP top 10? He wrote it back in 02, uh, the top vulnerabilities, uh, the top attacks in the OWASP top 10 haven't really changed materially since then. And uh, he built Contrast Security, he founded Contrast Security because he spent about 15 years running an, uh, an application pen testing company called As Aspect and where he broke into voting machines, he, bro he broke into a lot of like, uh, very sensitive government agencies I can't tell you about and a bunch of other stories that he has if you can, he'll probably tell you over a few beers. But he said there has to be a better way. He kept every single time he kept doing the same thing. Kept, he, all, uh, he would charge tons of money just going through code reviews, using 15, 20 year old technology like static and dynamic analysis. And he was like, there has to be a better way. There has to be a way this can scale. There are not enough AppSec experts in the world. And there's not enough time in the world to ship code securely. So that's what, we, that's what our company is built on and that's enough about us. So you heard, we have a free tool, we're contrast security, but this is about uh, IaaS and RASP for, uh, for building security into your DevOps pipeline, right? So we all know this. You're in this room because you care about security. We all know this is data we see in our app on a real-time basis, uh, in our platform on a real-time basis. And this kind of surprised me when I joined the AppSec world, is 79% of our average customer's app is not their own code. It's libraries they're downloading off of GitHub, uh, some open source project, and only 8% of that is used. Right? Only 21% of the code that a, that a Fortune 500 company or a startup uses is actually their own. Right? So your app is vulnerable, and it's going to continue to be vulnerable. Don't let any security vendor tell you otherwise. Right? And you're always under attack. Right? So uh, this is st uh, because we find vulnerabilities. We also help you defend against it. We see this data on a real-time basis as well. These are all the apps that are, uh, the, all the attacks that our customers' apps sees. So um, we see SQL injections, half the apps that we protect today see SQL injections on a day-to-day -day basis, right? 
the second column is like uh, how, you know, how the percentage has changed since the previous month. But really, things have not changed since 2002. Uh, some, there's one new interesting thing here. That's the vulnerability that brought Equifax down. Uh, they're a customer now. But uh, uh, besides that, uh, they, you know, nothing's really changed. So you're under attack. Apps are vulnerable. And uh, we're writing more code as a human race than ever before. So this is just going to be a bigger and bigger problem. Right? That's why we have a DevSecOps track at this conference. You know, this is my first time in Jenkins World, and we have this conference. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised, and also I, I think this word is, it went from in Jan of 2017, where this word was just being floated around, and now it's, it's buzzword overkill. Uh, so I'd like to start with our definition of what DevSecOps is and what Jeff uh, frames as DevSecOps. Um, DevSecOps is not a Jenkins integration. Right? I'm the first person to get, be guilty about it, saying that, oh, we integrate with Jenkins. Oh, we can create a Jira ticket from, uh, from our platform. Yay, we do DevOps. No, 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 no. The reason why we do that, uh, there are four tenants of DevSecOps that came from DevOps. Right? There are four tenants. It's CAMs. So here's a new thing that you're going to learn. Uh, if you don't know the culture, automation, measurement, and sharing. 90% of this conference talks about, we have, you have vendors talking about automation, right? Automation is the business case we're making to bring DevOps into our enterprises. But it's, uh, you're successfully doing DevOps if you are breaking down silos, you are measuring, you, so you're collecting the right data, and you're sharing it across functions to be able to, and come together to solve the problem. So if you want to be able to ship secure code, you have to be able to not just create an integration that pushes uh, data across to an engineering team. That data has to be actionable, and it has to be democratic. Everybody should be able to see it, so it should be transparent. And it should be a shared responsibility, right? Our most successful customers are those that embed security engineers into their sprints. If we, if our security, we start with a security team, but we don't sell to a company till we have an engineering team on board that has tested our product and is happy with it and has said, yes, we will get our teams to use it. Our most successful customers have, have convinced, are convinced enough to hire security engineers where their only job is to work on ticket security tickets. The moment you see that shift of going from, I don't know anything about my security, I don't care about it, to, oh, security is a bug, Secure, vulnerabilities are bugs, to security is a feature I need to work on, that's the real shift, that's the real win, right? So how do you make that happen? You need accurate results. If you're gonna take a static scan that brings out a bunch of different, uh, that generates a thousand page PDF, and now you're going to feed that into a Slack alert, or you're going to uh, you, you're going to fail a build using a Jenkins plugin. You're you're just shifting the problem left. <laughs> you're not actually shifting left. You're shifting the problem left, right? Still, the problem still exists. So, you have to be able to provide more accurate results. You have to be able to do it real time. It's not security is not a step in the process. Security works in the background, tells you problems while you are doing, you're running your SS, uh, secure SDLC. Right? It's continuous and it's reliable. You know the results are right. You know when you fix the problem, you're fine. Right? So, that, so that's where IAST and RASP comes in. IAST stands for Interactive Application Security Testing. RASP stands for Runtime Application Self-Protection. I don't expect you to remember that. I hate these terms. And I sell products that do, that do these things. <laughs> right? uh, but it's it, it fundamentally, it does, uh, what I want to take, what you want you to take away is this. I asked, makes your application self-protecting. It embeds itself in the app, so it finds vulnerabilities while you build and test your application. As you write code, as you click through your app while you're doing functional testing, I asked, finds vulnerabilities in the background and tells developers, hey, you have a problem on this page, the problem is in line X, that, that's the problem. So it works by 
and the reason it's able to do this is because it's in your app. If it's a, uh, it's it, it's inside. It's one of the files that's in your application. So it sees what's going on in the application in real time. It's seeing what it's doing to the sync. It's seeing how it's talking to the database. It's seeing how data, uh, how the code is interacting with the H with the data that's flowing through the application. Right. Now imagine that same interaction in production, with live production data going through it. You just flip the mode, and RASP allows you to defend against attacks on those vulnerabilities. That's what IaaS is, and that's what RASP is. So IaaS, while developing your app, lets you find vulnerabilities as you're building your app without taking a separate step for security. And then RASP does the same thing in production. It just defends against those vulnerabilities. Really, so how does that happen? So it you know, contrasts IaaS and RASP solutions, and so do a few other vendors in the industry. We all use this concept of dynamic instrumentation. So I won't go into too much detail, but we work, if you've heard of New Relic or App Dynamics, we use this concept of bytecode instrumentation to hook into the application. That's how we work, right? And it essentially helps you do three things. It helps you find vulnerabilities, whether it's your own or whether it's in libraries, uh, libraries or frameworks, and it helps you defend against attacks. So this is just an example. Without scanning, find vulnerabilities. So you can see, you find, tells you the line of code, it tells you where the problem was, tells you what line of code originated the problem, and tells you exactly what the SQL query that, that was created that that's going to cause the attack. Right? Production, this is a real attack uh, using the exploit that uh, brought down Equifax. But a good RASP agent that knows, uh, because it's in, in an app, in your application, knows what libraries you're using. So this is actually, we eat our own dog food. We use contrast to protect contrast. Contrast doesn't use struts2. But this is a struts2 attack. But it tells me this is probed. Probed means ineffective. That means I don't have to worry about this attack. Nobody else in the world can tell you the difference between effective and ineffective attack. Because why? Because a RASP agent can see what libraries you're using and see what you're actually vulnerable against and what's exploitable. Right? Right, really, really quick. It also gives you the, uh, uh, the ability to tell your SOC, give your SOC visibility and your IR team visibility into an, a running application like never before. So here's the ob obligatory integration slide. You know, if you want to see how uh, an IS or RASP product works in a CI/CD pipeline in real time, you can do it yourself by downloading our Community Edition. Or you can go to the booth of, uh, go to our booth or any of the uh, security vendors that um, promise to do this and ask them to show you a demo. Right? So I won't spend time on this in the interest of time. Easy to deploy, we're just a jar file. On the Java side, we're just a jar file. However, you would add a jar file to your deployment scripts, um, do that, <laughs> and you have security. You have IS and RASP. So because we are, some, we are just a jar file, we deploy with everything, right? We, we, we go where your app goes, and regardless of how you deploy it and where you deploy it. Uh, we do have formal partnerships and integrations with some key IaaS and PaaS vendors. So I don't want to discount that. Uh, I would talk to our, our guys at the booth if that, or go to our website and see that. We'll also give you results where you want it. You want your developers to see it in their ID, because as they hit compile and as they do unit testing, they want to see it. You have it. You want to send it to a Slack channel? You have it. You want to, we have a Chrome extension. Um, so in the, uh, to conclude, you can start today. IaaS and RASP. IaaS lets you find vulnerabilities as you build your app. RASP helps you defend against those vulnerabilities, all in the same agent. And vulnerabilities, whether it's your own code or it's libraries or frameworks. And you can do that today. You can add security development, lock down your open source, enable automatic testing, and prevent exploits in production. And you can do it for free with the only visionary in the application security testing magic quadrant. That's us. That's all I had.